Good morning, Year 11s. Welcome to Geometric Growth and Decay. So, geometric growth works slightly differently to linear growth in that the amount it changes each time is different. So, here is our recursion relation, and the sequence that spits out is where well, we start with 1, and then to get from 1 to the next, we're multiplying it by 2. So, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. Now, on the graph, that looks like this. Initially, we start here. 1 in, 2 up, 2 in, 4 up, 3 in, 8 up, 4 in, 16 up, 5 in, way, way, way up there, 32 up. And what you might notice is that this no longer creates a straight line. We are curving up like this. Essentially, when we multiply by the previous term, we're not going to create a straight line, we create a curve. And this curve is extremely useful for us in terms of modeling financial growth and decay. Because when we do compound interest or reducing balance with decay, we will get a curve. So we can use recursion to plot this. All right, decay looks like this. So this pattern here, I'm taking the previous one, which is 243, and multiplying it by a third. Now a third of 243 is 81. A third of 81 is 27. A third of 27 is 9. A third of 9 is 3. So what's happening here is we are going downhill very quickly. We're starting at 243, which is about there. One in, we're down to 81. Two in, we're down to 27. Three in, we're down to nine. Three, etc. You can see that we're dropping rapidly. We won't ever hit the x-axis, but we're going to drop very close to it. Note that when we're multiplying here, whoops, wasn't what I meant to do. Sorry, that was meant to be a highlight. When we multiply here by something greater than one, it's growth. When we're multiplying by something less than one, it's decay. All right. So just remember remembering how to use percentages. To increase by 3%, so if we want to increase 100 by 3%, we multiply it by 1.03. If you want to decrease by 15%, you multiply by 0.85. And the reason we multiply by 0.85 is because it's 1 minus 0 0.15. And the reason we multiply by 1.03 is because it's 1 plus 0 0.03. So essentially, to increase by a percentage, we multiply by 1 plus what it is as a decimal. To decrease by a percentage, we multiply by 1, subtract what it is as a decimal. All right. Now we've got that, and we know about geometric growth and decay. We can use these to model, if I can scroll down. Oh, that's not good. Sorry, slight technical glitch. Back in the game. All right, compound interest. So here, we're looking at investment with initial value of 15,000 that earns 3% every year compound interest. The recurrence relation to model this would be the initial value is 15,000. And then to get from one to the next, every year we're increasing by 3%. So what this looks like is T, not T, VN plus one, is equal to VN multiplied by 1.03. That increases it by 3%. Another way you might see this written is VN plus 1 is equal to 1.03 VN. That means it goes up by 3% there. Now, what this looks like over time, we can go back to our calculator. We can start with 15,000. 1, 5, 0, 0, 0. And then to get from one to the next, we use equals one five zero 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 multiplied by oh not one five zero 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 because otherwise it would just happen once. We want C one. So the one above multiplied by one point oh three enter. That's awkward. Oh I see why. Bear with me. We're just going to start again. Whew. 
All right, 15,000. Equals A1, the one above, multiplied by 1.03. Enter. All right, so that's increased 15,000 by 3% initially. Now, no, it's gone up 450. If I drag down again, it goes up not by 450, but by slightly more. That's because each time we're increasing by 3%, but because the previous amount was larger than the one before, each time we increase, we're going to go up by more than the previous time. So it's compounding as we increase. And we can look at this over the first 20 years alone and see that it comes out to 27,000 after 21 years. And that's how we track its value. So after six years, it will be worth... 17,389. All right, how does this work with depreciation? Assets that depreciate by the same percentage each year don't necessarily depreciate by the same dollar value each year. So for example, if my car is currently worth 30 grand and it depreciates by 15% a year, we want to work out how long will it be worth its original value. One way to do this, we look at it and say, well, its initial value is 30,000. And to get from one year to the next, what's happening is we are taking the previous year. So to get from one year to the next, we're taking the previous year and multiplying by 1 take 0 0.15 because we want to drop it by 15%. And this is the same as Vn plus 1 is equal to 0 0.85 Vn. Right? So let's look at the value of the car over time. And in the calculator, right back up to the top, the cars were initially worth 30,000. Two, one, two. We want to go equals B1 times 0 0.85. <clears throat> All right, so one year after owning the car, it's dropped almost, well, it dropped four and a half grand. The next year, it doesn't drop the same amount. That's because we're losing a percentage but that's not the same dollar value each year. So we're going to drop this down until we find out when is the car worth half the original amount. And given it was originally worth 30, it is worth half the original amount five years in. So it's first under half the original amount after five years. It's quite an easy way to lose money by buying a nice car. All right, so that gives you a couple of tools with, multiply, with using recursion to model growth and decay when it's not linear. Hope that helped.